next method of charging is by conduction. This is one of the very important methods that you need to understand very nicely. And there are also numericals that might be asked from this particular method. Basically, numericals based on capacitance, charge transfer is being asked from this particular topic. So be very understandable, be very clear when you learn this method. Okay. So by the definition, okay, by the definition of conduction, we can say that whenever two bodies having uneven number of charges, okay, are being physically made to touch each other, then charges transfer from the body from one body to another body okay now i'll not say from which body to the next body because that is what you need to understand through concepts okay so once more i'll repeat the definition conduction is a method of charging in which two bodies having uneven number of charges or unequal number of charges which are not physically neutral are being made to physically touch each other and charges get transferred from one body to the next body okay now let us understand this thing by example okay let me say again i have body one and body two okay let me say these are identical bodies for the for, for, for this particular experiment let us understand that these are two identical bodies these are two conducting spheres let us understand that these are two conducting spheres now if those are physically neutral then they would have even number of charges equal number of positive and negative charges but right now i'll say that one of the bodies having and both of the bodies basically will have uneven number of charges and will make them touch each other okay that situation will look like such will make them touch each other for momentarily and then will again separate them then what will be the charge in this case let me first say that his charge is q1 let me say his charge is q2 let me say his radius is r1 and let me say his radius is r2 okay now considering these radius as different we'll get a different method of solving okay for the first time in the very simplest of case we'll try to understand this thing by very simplest of case then we'll go for the general formula so to understand it by the very simplest of case let me also give you a very simple example right so in order to understand this method of charging let us take a very practical example one of the simple example and we'll try to relate the example with this experiment so as to make our concepts clear okay now let us take a container a container filled with water let us assume that this is a container filled with water and we have an identical container identical matlab it's completely same in the volume as of this container okay so this container is basically empty initially now what if i connect both the containers through a pipe and through a pipe now if i connect them through a pipe and suppose if i let the water to flow if i do not stop the flow of water then this water will flow to this container that is very normal everybody knows that right now how long will this water flow to this particular container that's a major question everybody again knows this simple logic the water is going to flow from this container to this container until and unless the level of the water in both the containers are same correct that's the logic right so suppose this is the level at the end time the water level would be here here the water level would be here so both the containers would be filled up to the same level now people also have a tendency of saying this this as water when we connect them uh, when we contain when we connect both the containers through a pipe we have seen the water flows from higher potential or higher concentration gradient to lower potential or lower concentration gradient now try to remember that statement from higher potential to lower potential right now this is a concept that we have learned in our school days in our general school days but the term potential is very very important we are also going to encounter a term called potential also in electrostatics now that concept would come a bit later but in order to understand this example as a whole i'll be talking about the concept of potential formula wise so that you can at least attend the numericals even now we do not need to wait for next one or two months to understand that particular concept so we'll try to understand it right over now we'll be using the formula and we'll also start doing some numericals based on that okay so what you have seen is water flows from this container to this container till the level of the water is same and mind it i say that the containers are identical now what would happen if the same experiment is conducted here now let me rub this thing up so we'll now try to relate this example with this set of example correct so taking that example into account now let me say that we have two identical spheres completely identical so identical means what 
they will have the same radius. Let me take two identical spheres. Now, if I say this particular sphere has, suppose, uh, let me take an even number so as to make it easy. Let me say this sphere has 10 coulomb of charge. Right? Okay. Now, what will happen if I let them touch each other momentarily and then I remove them? What will happen is that we already can guess the answer. How much charge would each of the, uh, would each of the uh, conductors have? They would have 5 column and 5 column. Exactly half and half. Just like we saw in the example. Right? Now, what if I change the scenario a bit? Okay, let me now change the scenario a bit. Okay, so now I will say if this container also has a particular amount of charge. Let me say this container has 8 coulomb of charge. This container has 10 coulomb of charge. What would happen if I let them touch momentarily and then I remove them? Mind it, the thing that we are explaining right now is only for identical cases. Okay, we are talking about identical conductors. Both of them has to be identical in order to take this thing down, right? Now, when you have identical containers and both of the objects now are having charges, this is having 10 coulomb of charge, this is having 8 coulomb of charge. If you let them touch momentarily and separate them, they would again has to have equal amount of charge. That's the basic concept. They would have the equal amount of charge. And how do you get that? That is given by you just need to add the total charges because now try to understand the law of conservation. The law of conservation says that in the initial situation, jitna bhi charge hoga, final situation may be utna hi charge hona padega. There is no loss of charge, right? So in the initial situation, what is the total charge? Eight, sorry, ten plus eight. That is eighteen coulomb, right? So in the final situation, they again need to have how much? Eighteen coulomb and the next basic thing was what? They need to have equal amount of charge. So 18 coulomb divided by 2, how much will you get? You will get it as 9 coulomb. So each of them would have 9 coulomb and 9 coulomb of charge. Again, if you think that one of the charge is having, sorry, one of the con uh, conductor is having a negative charge. Just for an example, suppose this conductor is having minus 2 coulomb of charge. What would be the total charge now after you let them touch momentarily? Again, go by the same concept. Now, charge is being... Scalar quantities, again one of the properties, we can directly add them. So what would be the total charge in this case? 10 minus 2, that is 8 coulomb. This 8 coulomb has to be in the final situation as well. So you divide 8 coulomb by 2, you get it as 4 coulomb and 4 coulomb. So both of the conductors will have 4 coulomb of charge. Okay? That is a concern when we talk about identical containers. But what would happen if the containers are non-identical? If they have different amount of volume, different amount of surface area. Okay, how are, how are we going to deal with that? Now, it's pretty easy to deal with that. Try to understand the statement. The statement says, in the example of water that we saw, whenever the two containers are connected by a pipe, the water flew from the container at higher potential to the container at lower potential. Kaptak flow hai, the flow is maintained till the point of time when the potential in both the containers are same. That is a very important point. So whenever we'll be dealing with conductors that are non-identical, we will keep that basic point in mind. Suppose the charge would flow from one conductor to the next. I do not know which conductor to whom, but it would flow till the time when till the time both the conductors will have the same potential. Okay. Now in electrostatics, we represent potential by V. Okay, we represent potential by V. It has got a basic formula as KQ by R. This is the formula of potential. We'll also be discussing this formula whenever we'll be dealing with potential as a whole. But for the time being, try to understand this formula of potential is only for spherical bodies, spherical conducting bodies. Okay, so you just take it as spherical bodies for the timing. Let's not get too tricky for the timing. So, so the formula here gives us KQ by R. So where K represents a constant, as I've already said, Q will represent the total charge and R is the radius of the conductor. Now we'll be employing this formula in order to understand what is the charge after we let them touch momentarily. Okay. So after we let them touch momentarily, what is the final basic point? They would transfer charge from one body to another until and unless both the bodies end up at the same potential. Now initially let me consider his potential is V1, his potential is V2. Okay. 
and when we let them touch and separate, let their common potential be V. We actually call it as common potential. When we talk about capacitance, we'll try to understand that this V is actually known as common potential at that point. Okay. Now let us try to understand how are we going to this do this thing. Okay. Now I'd also like to make you understand that. Most of the students again have a doubt in asking this: Is it necessary to let them touch physically, or can I can I put a stick around them? Yeah, that is possible. That is also the same case as let them uh, letting them touch physically. Rather than doing it as such, what you can do is, if you want to keep them at distance, and if you come connect them via a conducting wire, it still means the same thing. Okay, so do not get confused. It still means the same thing by connecting via wire or letting them connect physically. Okay, the same conduction would happen in both the cases. So do not get confused in those kind of uh, medial curtains. Okay, so try to understand how you get the final charges. Now let us assume the charge get transferred from one body to another. I do not know from which body to what, but if I say a particular charge is greater than the next charge, so in, in general cases, charge would flow from this body to that body in under different different conditions. Okay, for the time being, we'll say after the transfer of charge takes place, let his charge be Q1 dash or Q1 prime. Let his charge be Q2 dash or Q2 prime. Okay, we need to understand how much would these charges be. Okay, that is how we'll be able to understand the numerical examples. So now let me write down the formula of potential. Okay, but before that, you already know this is what this is the initial situation, and this is the final situation, right? By the law of conservation, what do you know? The total charge in the initial situation and the total charge in the final situation have to be the same, right? That is what the conservation state. So, in the initial situation, what is the total charge? The total charge is Q1 plus Q2, right? What is the total charge in the final situation? We can take it as equation one if you want to. What is the final situation? The final situation, the total charge would be Q1 dash plus Q2 dash. Okay, and this and this has to be equal, right? That is by the law of conservation. So I'll be making use of these equations later on. Now, taking this into consideration, let us now write down the formula of potential. What is the formula of potential? As stated, the formula of potential is kQ by r. So what would be the potential for this sphere? The potential for this sphere would be v1. You can take it as v1. It would be kQ1 by r1. What would be the potential of this sphere? It would be V two K Q two by R two. Correct. Now, in this case, when you let them touch each other, both of them would end up with the same potential, right? Now, from here, what you can get is a potential formula. Here, the formula potential would be V. We'll take it as V. That would be K Q one dash by R one. What would be V here? K Q two dash by R two. The radius they do not change, right? Now some people might again have a confusion. Some students might have this confusion. Whenever charges get transferred from one body to another, because of the increase in their masses or because of the increase in their density, okay, sorry, the density will never increase. That has to remain constant because of the increase in the masses. You can take the radius has to increase, right? Yeah, that is a practical situation that is possible. But whenever we are doing a numerical, because the masses of electrons are so so negligible, we will not take that increase to be very significant. Okay, that's an insignificant increase. Hence, we will not consider the radius to change. We will consider the radius to be remaining same all throughout the whole example. Okay, so we have now written down the formula for the potentials in the initial situation. And the potentials in the final situation. We'll be substituting the values of this in our equations to get the required results. Okay, fine. Okay, so the final situation is still in the board. I kept it so as to derive the formulas and make it easier for you guys. So from here, since these potentials are same, I can compare both of the potentials, right? So if I compare them, what would I get? K Q one dash by R one is equal to K Q two dash by R two. These k's are constant. I can cancel it off. So I'll get it as Q1 dash by R1 equals to Q2 dash by R2. Now you can take any one of the value Q1 dash or Q2 dash, and we'll substitute that particular value here, and then we'll compare the equations to get the required results, right? So if I find out the value of Q1 dash, that would be R1 would go in this side, so it would be R1 by R2 into Q2 dash, right? So I'll substitute this value of Q1 dash in our equation two. And then we will compare equation one 
will equalize actually will equalize equation one and equation two because these are all q totals and they have to be the same value right okay so substituting the value of q1 dash here and comparing it how will you get the equation it will be in the board now okay so we have substituted the value of q1 dash Okay, the value that we have got in our previous uh, equation, we substituted that here, and then we have equated equation one and equation two. So you end up getting this equation. Okay, I have done that part. So I have directly written the equation. I hope it's clear for you guys, right? So now you can just go on equalizing, and you will get the value of q two dash. So how much will you get it as? So this is q one plus q two equals to. You can just take q two prime is common, q two dash is common. You will end up getting r one by r two plus one. So this would look like Q1 plus Q2 equals to Q2 dash. How much should be the LCM? The LCM would still be R2. Here it would be R1 plus R2. So how much should Q2 dash be from here? Q2 dash should be this R2 get multiplied here. This R1 plus R2 be divided. So R2 by R1 plus R2 multiplied by Q1 plus Q2. That is how we will get the get the the final charge on the second sphere. Now again. Rather than substituting Q, the value of Q1 dash, if you substituted the value of Q2 dash, you would end up getting Q1 dash here. So, once you do that, you will get some out of the same nature of equation. So, taking this into consideration, you can yourself free in that equation. How much would be the would be the formula value for Q1 dash? Since here it's R2 in the top at the numerator level, so here it would be R1. So, R1 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied by Q1 into Q2. That is how you are going to get the final charges if the bodies are non-identical. Had they been identical, what would happen? Had they been identical, the condition would have been what? R1 equals to R2. So if you have substituted R1 equals to R2 equals to R, let me say, so it would be R divided by R plus R. So it would be twice R. So the R should get cancelled and this would end up as how much? Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. Similarly, if you substitute the value of R to be same in this condition, again, you, how much would you get? You get it to be Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. These are same values and half of the total. The one that you have already done in the simplest of case. So that is all you need to know about charging by conduction. Once these formulas are in your head, once the concept is in your head, you can do any kind of numericals based on this particular concept. Okay, so that is about charging by conduction. Thank you. So if you find our video informative and helpful to you guys, please like, share and subscribe. And in order to ask any kind of queries, any kind of problems that you're having related to these kind of videos, we'll have a free WhatsApp group, the link of which will be given in the description below. You can join us here. You can ask any kind of queries and also stay tuned for next videos.